here. 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 You might, yeah, please pull that up. Okay, at this time, join me. Latches here also. Our Pledge of Allegiance, please. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, members of the public may comment on any item not appearing on the agenda. Under state law, matters presented under this item cannot be discussed or acted upon by the Planning Commission. For items appearing on the agenda, the public will be invited to make comments that, um, at, at the time the item comes up for Planning Commission consideration so that all interested parties have an opportunity to speak any person addressing the Planning Commission may be limited at the direction of the Chair. Is there anyone who would like to comment on something not on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on to our approval of the minutes from July 12th. I'll move that we approve the minutes of July 12, 2017 as, as presented. Is there a second? I second it. Roll call, please. Gong? Yes. Elise? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Yes? Yes. Whitlet? Yes. Aguilar? <coughs> okay. Well, we'll move on then to item four, which is our parcel map hearings. We take these all as one item together if there's none that have been. Um, noticed to pull, so that's A, B, and C. And th at this time, um, there is a public hearing. Does <coughs> anyone like to comment on any of these? Public hearing is open on any of these three. Uh, seeing none, we'll close that public hearing and we'll entertain a motion on item A, which is a tentative parcel map PPM 17-020. And this is um, the one in due course. I'll make a motion we approve the category exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act and the state sequel guideline pursuant to Title 14 California Code Regulation, Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to the new construction or conversion of small structures and conditionally approved tentative Partial map number PPM 17-020 with a finer map waiver. Is that a second? Gong? Yes. Millies? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. And, and Elliot, yes. Elliot, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay, we'll look at B, which is a tentative parcel map. Number PPM 17-021, and that's the one outside of Woodlake, the Robert Davis property. Do we have a motion on that one, or any other discussion? I'll make a motion we approve category exception consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act and the state sequel guideline pursuant to Title 14, California Code Regulation, Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to new construction or conversion of smart structures and conditionally approved tentative partial map number PPM 17-021 and waiver of final map. Roll call, please. Gong? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aguilar? Okay, we'll move on to C, which is our last tentative parcel map, number PPM 17-023, Jesus and Margarita Rosales. And that's located on Young Road in Allensworth. I'll make uh, 
motion to approve the category exemption consistent with the California Environment Quality Act and the state's equal guideline pursuant to Title 14 California Code Regulation Section 15601B3, uh, the general rule as the project that does not have the potential to cause a significant effect on the environment and it is therefore not subject to CEQA. Approve the two exemption pertaining to the average lot width shall be at least one third of the average lot depth and pertaining to the requirements and the improvements to the private uh, vehicular access easement and condition approved tentative partial map number PPM 17 023. That one was different. I'll second the motion. Roll call, please. Gong? Yes. Neely? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aguilar? Okay, we'll move on to our item five, which is our pup. On this one? Okay. I want to thank you, Mel, for all that good verbiage you gave us on the first thing. <coughs> Even without your glasses. So item 5A is a is a final site plan PSR 17-004. This is the Maximus 3 company and uh, this is located in Erlemart and it's the it's a, a, a 12,000 square foot grocery store on a 32,000 square foot parcel and Dana is our presenter. I am thank you Elliot the applicant has requested that this item be continued until September 27th, 2017. He was unable to attend today, and thus the request. Sounds rational. Um, before we do that, in terms of a motion, this is a public hearing. Does anyone want to speak on this? If not, we'll go ahead and continue the public hearing, I guess, with the I'll make a motion that we continue this public hearing to September 27, uh, 2017. A second. Roll call, please. Gong? Yes. Neely? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlock? Yes. Uh, Dana, I, had a, I did have a question on that one. Was that, what kind of grocery store was that? It's a Mexican themed oh, okay. food store. Yeah. It's a what? It's a small uh, Hispanic grocery store. Yeah. Oh, well, that's cool. Something different. Okay, we'll move on to uh, item B, which is a special use permit PSP. <coughs> this is Dorn Gas Inc. And it's a um, installation of a 30,000 gallon propane tank for above ground storage. And it's on a site located on the northeast corner of State Route 63 and Avenue 396, south of Cutler Orosi. And again, our contact is Dana. Thank you. And yes, this is, as mentioned, a 30,000 gallon propane tank. And the project is categorically exempt from CEQA pertaining to Section 15303, Class 3. Uh, new construction or conversion of small structures. Uh, the exemption <coughs> is applicable and appropriate because the propane tank is considered an accessory structure to the existing agricultural operations on the subject site. And this is the location and property ownership map. This project was noticed according to the law and staff has not received any comments regarding the project. Entitlement is found in section 16 of ordinance number 352, which allows flammable liquid stored above ground for agricultural purposes in a quantity greater than 10,000 gallons only if a special use permit is first approved. And this project meets the development standards established in section 15A5E regarding above ground storage of flammable liquids. The project is located in the Rural Valley Lands Plan and the land use element of the journal plan and the designation is Valley Agriculture. 
The project was found to be consistent with the applicable Tulare County General Plan policies. The parcel is under Williamson Act and the project conforms to the principles of compatibility as set forth in Government Code Section 51238.1. This is the vicinity map. The, as mentioned, the project is located on the southeast corner of State Highway 63 and Avenue 396 south of Cutler or Orosi. Caltrans submitted a no comment response to the consultation notice. This is the zoning map. Site is zoned AE20. All of the surrounding properties are AE20 and AE40, and they contain orchards and scattered rural residences. This is the aerial photograph. And the site has access to State Highway 63 via a ranch road. Site plan. This is the installation of a 30,000 gallon propane tank on a 1,200 square foot portion of an 18 acre parcel. The use permit is for the volume of flammable fuel because it exceeds the 10,000 gallons allowed by right. And the installation of the entire system requires approximately four to six weeks. And the project is a seasonal operation and would be used approximately eight to 10 hours during freeze events. This is the uh, second page two site, site plan illustrating the precise location on the APN 035190-001. Staff's recommendation is approval of the categorical exemption and the special use permit number PSP 17-047. And that concludes staff's report. This is a public hearing, so is the applicant here? Anyone would like to speak on this? Please state your name and address for the record. Randy Smith, uh, 3922 Richmond Avenue. Clovis, California, and 93619. I'm from Dorn's Gas. And basically, I'm here just to answer any questions or anybody has anything that they <coughs> standard. We've done quite a few in the county, and this one will be no different than what we've previously done. We've done lots of these. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Uh, what's the distance from the tank from 63? Uh, the tank will be? It should be on the site map. It's the site it's, map. it's inside quite a ways. Yeah, it's uh, our with the thirty thousand gallon tank. We're required fifty feet from property lines, and but it's uh, it's offset quite a ways from sixty three. Oh yeah, I see. Uh, what it is. Uh, through the chair, it's uh, hundred feet. Six hundred yeah. feet. Six hundred yeah. feet. Yeah, I six hundred. Six hundred. Yeah, I noticed that uh, <coughs> we've done a lot of these, but uh, this is probably as close to residences that I've seen. Yeah. And so I called Charlie Norman yesterday. And Charlie actually pulled up the actual staff report here and went through it and came back. He says it's in compliance. 600 feet is the distance. He says, I don't have any problems with it. He says the tank is orientated such that the business end of the tank is not going towards the residences. And he says, I don't have any issues with it. It's also to point out is that uh, since there's been a change in the fire part of it, they've started requiring crash ballards. Uh, fencing was acceptable in prior years, but everything we've done the last couple, two, three years is, has cr crash ballards. And I just want to let uh, Dana and the staff know that we're going back on all the previous projects that didn't have crash ballards and putting those in on top of the fencing. Could you explain to us what that is? Pardon me? Uh, it's uh, four inch uh, steel pipes. They're six feet long. They go in the ground three, three feet. Oh, I see. Okay. Filled with concrete. <clears throat> I mean, we, we don't have a lot of access to impact, but it's now a requirement in the county, and we're going back on previous ones. Yeah, I've seen those. Those look pretty substantial. Well, okay, if, if um, Charlie's good to go, that's probably our question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for thank your you. comments. And uh, if there's no further qu questions or anybody want to address the commission, then we'll close the public hearing, and we would entertain a motion on this one. 
I'll make a motion we approve the category exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act and the state sequel guideline pursuant to Title 14 California Code Regulation Section 15303 Class 3 pertaining to new construction and conversion of small structures and conditionally approved special use permit number PSB 17 047. Roll call, please. Gong? Yes. Haley's? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aguilar? <clears throat> okay, motion passed, and we'll move on to our director's report. I see we have Mr. Washington here, so I'm sure we'll have a lot of great news. Uh, I will. I, I will update what we did last year, but first there's a, uh, a matter before you that I'd like to uh, see how the board or the, the commission uh, chooses to act on this. Uh, I know that there was a, there was a request to maybe uh, tour sentence facility down in Tarabella, <coughs> and uh, I contacted the company, and they're, they're more than willing to accommodate a tour. And we have a, uh, a lack of items for next ne the rec next regular scheduled meeting. So what we passed out here is is an action that you could do to cancel <coughs> the next uh, regular scheduled meeting and then uh, schedule a special meeting <coughs> to be held down there for the tour of the facility. So uh, Sutton's uh, all about having having you guys come down and, and, and take a tour of their site. So if it's uh, the commission's desire. There's two motions there to, to, to fulfill that uh, and stay in compliance with the Brown Act and all of that. Uh, there, I have a question. On the special meeting, there would be no agenda items at all? Special meeting, there will be an agenda. The only, the only agenda, uh, the only item on the agenda will be the tour of the facility. It will, it will still be a public, uh, open to the public, so therefore it will be posted like a, like a regular meeting agenda is posted. So if someone were to show up, they, they have the right to tag along and follow with, with the commissioners on that tour. Uh, there, the difference between the special meeting versus holding the regular meeting uh, is that a, a regular meeting would require the public comment period. There is no requirement for public comment at the special meeting. So that's why we're requesting that you cancel <coughs> the regular scheduled meeting and, and then uh, schedule a special meeting. Gotcha. At 9 o'clock? At 9 a.m., yes. Uh, do we drive to Tarabella or do we? Yeah, we'll give you the exact address. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, 9370 uh, uh, Road 234 in Tarabella. What we'll do is I'll identify, because they have multiple addresses actually down there, we want to identify the exact building that it will be in and, the, and potentially the conference room or whatever to identify that in the agenda so that's what will be posted and, uh, and we'll get you directions and all of that as we go forward. I think that's a neat idea. Well, I see that last sentence here uh, that we refrain from discussing issues that might be in a future meeting. Huh? Right. It, it would be you'd be cautioned to to not talk about uh, any maybe if there's some certain sort of plans or something that, that that the commission might take action in the future on. I would recommend that no discussion take place uh, regarding specifics like that. I don't know wouldn't that, that there is anything. Any, wouldn't that be a, a Information gathering. I mean, we, to make well, a you can. Yeah, in the future. I, well, you know, what? It's, it's a county council. Uh, we can get his guidance on that. Please refrain from speaking on any <laughs> <laughs> on any issues that you would normally go over. Okay. So it's ninety three seventy road what two thirty four. I'll make a motion. We do that, which is that we. Cancel our meeting and uh, take a tour of the Sutton Pistachio Plant in Tarabella, which will be if a you, special if you can meeting follow on the, August the, 9th. The script, the two scripts, take one motion and uh, act. One, and it's two motions. I have to read the script exactly? I don't want to. <laughs> I make a motion to cancel the regular calendar meeting on August 9th, 2017, for lack of items. Is there, there a, a second? On there? Yeah. No second. Get a second roll call, please. Gong. Yes. Neelys. Yes. Elliot. Yes. Diaz. Yes. Whitlatch. Yes. Aguilar. Yes. Make a second motion. The special meeting be held at 9 a.m. on August 9th, 2017, 
at the main Sutton Pistachio location in Terrabella for a guided tour of the facility. Do we have a second? I'll second. <coughs> Roll call. Gong? Yes. Elise? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Mike, is this open for guests also if we if we wanted to? Well, they're members of the public. Yeah, they're me it's, a, it's a public meeting, so anyone that showed up legally has the right to tag along. Tag along, yep. I will probably extend an invitation to Supervisor Ennis, since it's his district, uh, to see if he'd like to join. It should be processing. Well, that's what I was thinking. It's, it's kind of early in the season, but I think it's bit. gearing up. And I think they have uh, enough material that they're, they're processing stuff pretty much year-round now anyway. And they've added some more lines there that, that they used to do, I think, in New York that they do now here. So it'll be interesting. They, they have a park as well that they built for the, for the community, and we'll be able to see the park. And yeah. So there's lots of, lots of things there on, on that It site. seemed like they, you know, were, well, they're a pretty substantial size of the industry, and they're also on the cutting edge of some of the uh, technology they're using for the water and that sort of thing. So I applaud the idea to do it. I think it'll be great, and we'll learn a lot. Uh, just as a, as a uh, year end, fiscal year end ended uh, at the end of June, so I have some numbers for the for the uh, economic development and planning branch. The 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 branch processed or issued actually 4,115 building permits last fiscal year. That's down slightly. It's about 10% dip from the previous year, but it's still significantly higher than than 14 and, and 13. So it, you have a little bit of a dip, but but overall that trend is is still going strong. And and this month has been a strong month as well. So it just uh, you you. You normally see some ups and downs, so it dipped a little bit versus the previous year, but it's still substantially over the, the years before that. Um, one thing that's notable is that, that home construction in the county is up over 80 percent over year over year. Uh, in 2016, we issued 116 new home permits, and then this past year we did 208. So it's significantly higher. It's still not as high as what cities are doing and all that because we really don't have a whole lot of housing developments in the unincorporated area, but it is a significant uh, increase. Construction valuation, again, took a little bit of a dip, but that it was artificially high. We, we almost had $200 million of construction value last year. Previous year was over $300 million, but that included some things that really don't get ass uh, assessed by the assessor, which was the county jail facility and, and uh, some of those solar projects which don't get uh, property value assessment. So it's still significantly higher than the previous years of 126 and 140 million. We're at, we're at 200 million, just under 200 million this past year. So, so it's, it's showing that the economy is still moving along, moving along good. Um, another indication that, that the economy is strong is, is inquiries to the, the permit center and zone inquiries when people are asking questions on can I do a lot split? What do I need to do to build this or, or do that? Uh, the RMA responded to 7,400 inquiries last year. Those are through phone messages or phone calls or emails or a, an occasional fax still. We do receive those. <laughs> um, so that's, aver that's averaging over 600, 600 a month that, that one person up is uh, Sammy Franks, who used to come before you quite often. She's really concentrating in the in the permit center that she's really handling most of those inquiries and and, and, it, and it is a significant number but but that added number really shows that there's still interest and involvement in what what people can do with their land and, and plans for for doing things and developments uh, in our building code and, and enforcement side there was over 300 uh, uh, abandoned vehicles that were abated last year uh, almost 200 of those were voluntary, so we have a very um, persuasive code officer that can get people to uh, abate on their own, and then we, the county actually uh, came in and towed uh, a little over 100 as well. So there's significant cleanup going on out there that's been going on. Code enforcement cases, there was uh, 490 cases closed last year. Uh, currently there's 238 active cases, and uh, 
new cases that were open last year was just under 400. So we're very active and, and we're keeping that case load down compared to how much we're bringing in uh, each year. So there's a lot of activity out there as well. What about tires? How do you get rid of those? You always stump me, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't. I don't have that. I don't have the answer because so, that's a solid waste uh, 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 issue, and solid waste isn't really in our division. Environmental health actually does that. I know there's programs we've talked about yeah. that in the past. There's some programs that's not run through the RMA, but um, we can look into that and see see what what the staff. I remember are. one of the slides in that program showed tires. And a, a washer, dryer in right. the county right away. I saw that on the way in, on, in the scenic corridor, just past Spruce. So uh, it looked like a new dumping. Right. And it's where, you know, hundreds and are coming every day to visit the national park, and they're looking at tires and a dump For right Tulsa. in the county right away. So maybe we should uh, notify solid waste. That's well, one I know that program. Breeding oh, area for mosquitoes, so... I understand that, uh, again, that program was solid waste. The <coughs> sheriff department had a piece of that as well. Yeah. And so I, we, we can readdress that and, and investigate and report back. The, in the planning uh, division that you, you were most uh, in touch with, project processing was up 25% year over year. There was uh, 429 projects ran through the division. And one of our one of our uh, highest, most productive uh, planners is right here in the audience, Dana. Dana Metlin processed over 160 projects this past fiscal year, so she's more than taking more than her share. I, I, I make appears. a motion we raise her pay. <laughs> <laughs> she's second. She's turn off your recorder now. Uh, as far as economic development. Uh, we've had a lot of projects going in. And I'll just touch base on, on where we're at right now. We're, we're working with uh, five different new gas stations potentially throughout the county, uh, a couple hotel sites, uh, and, and uh, in the market that, that you'll be hearing next month. Uh, so there's a, lot, there's a lot of activity going on. There's still a lot of uh, uh, reuse of existing facilities. The, Verdesian uh, Life Sciences building that was is north of Visalia, that is closed escrow now, and, and we're getting the Brandt company is moving in there and going to install a few, do a few minor tweaks into that existing facility and, and get that operating again. So there's a lot of uh, reuse of existing facilities and, and new development. So the economic what, what do development they do? doesn't. They're a fertilizer. Well, they're a huge company, uh, a global company, but they're, uh, that particular site will be mixing for fertilizers. So, so that would conclude the the planning update. Uh, I know, probably Rhodes. Do you have anything? Uh, not today. No. Uh, okay. Nice. Just real quickly, I uh, just wanted to update everybody. The early mark community plan was released last week, and there will be a meeting in early March. On uh, on uh, August third at the Memorial Building to update the community as to, to where we're at. We've had over eighteen meetings with the community, and hopefully this will be one of our final final meetings. But uh, yeah, the EIR and the community plan is uh, on the street and available on our website. And, and that should come if everything goes well. That should come to your planning commission to make a recommendation to the board, probably late September. Uh, probably the, the last, the second meeting in September is what we would be shooting for, uh, and then take it to the board in mid-October for a final adoption. What time will that be? It'll be at the regular uh, six o'clock, I believe. Um, but but look online uh, for the regular town council meeting uh, that they have. Good morning, uh, Hector Guerra, Chief Environmental Planner. Just a question for Commissioner Aguilar. Uh, have you had a chance to go out to look at the new park site to see how that's coming along in early March? Uh, I went through there when they were just working on it, so I'll, I'll make it a point to go this, this weekend. I heard it was coming along well, and I figured while you were there, you might, might check it out and report back to the commission. So oh, yeah, I, I think, I think construction's supposed to finish August? No, unfortunately there's, there's, <laughs> there's some, yeah, there's been a, a little bit of a delay regarding the shade structure. So that's going through DSA and, and there's a, a delay that the, the materials, because the, it's a custom structure, 
the materials aren't going to be completed or manufactured until toward the beginning of September, <coughs> I think, is when they're going to take delivery. Then it'll take uh, a number of weeks for it to get installed. So probably looking more towards first of October before the park is officially open and, and everything will be installed and in place. I read that there's a uh, carpet mill. It's really Porterville. I don't know if it's in the county or not. Was that a big employer? employer? That's closing in that was it was in Porterville. I'm not really I, I'm not familiar with the details, but I believe that was in that's in Porterville. <clears throat> I had an item related to um, the uh, community plan business, especially the Three Rivers one. This past weekend, they had the Dark Sky Festival, and they had venues from COS to Roads End and Cedar Grove, and it was really successful. The International Dark Sky Association was there, and <clears throat> I attended one of the presentations on Saturday night at Lodgepole, and of course there was an astronaut there that gave an incredible presentation on you know living and working in outer space and some of the things they did up there. It was very inspirational, and then it, he finished about 9.15, it was getting dark, and um, we all turned the lights out up there and um, waited for the... Um, International Space Station to fly overhead. It was due about that time. And sure enough, it flew right over the amphitheater and it was an incredible sight. I'm not certain where we are with the dark sky ordinance part of the uh, Three Rivers Community Plan, but there's a huge amount of support for that. Yeah, I, I understand that as well as the Oak uh, Plan as well. I don't believe that that's part of the, uh, the it'll be, it'll be referred to in the in, in the community plan but those would be separate items yeah. on a separate track going forward and as far as the three rivers plan goes we're hoping that the the environmental document by the end of september should be on the street for yeah. review well, will they, will that be addressed in the environmental document yeah well that's important i think Big loss. It is. Yeah. They, yeah. All of a sudden, like they just close the doors. And, and that electric bus manufacturing, that's 400 yeah. plus. Some of that could get absorbed. Okay, anything else from the gallery? That's it. Huh? Uh, any other items? from many commissioners that they want to bring up? Seeing none, we'll adjourn to the pistachio date of, of uh, in August that we're going to have at the Tourist Set. And I believe that's August 9th, 2017. Got us out of here at 9.37. That's not bad. No, 33. OK, so. I know why. It's really yeah, nice. Friends, yeah. Busy. Is this it, it looks like this from the, from the highway. Where is it related to? The left, to it's on the right-hand side. Right, as you're yeah, going, when you're coming up 